Beloved, we had a little bit of, oh, good morning, beloved. We had a little bit of issues this morning. I have a feeling Facebook Live is being swamped with uh, streaming services this morning, but we have it figured out, and here we are. I uh, hope this day finds you well. Welcome to our first ever live stream church. Now, one thing we always do every Sunday, as soon as we get together, is we worship the Lord in song. So if you know the words, or if you happen to have, you know, stolen a hymnal from the church, borrowed a hymnal from the church, um, page three, let's sing first verse of Holy, Holy, Holy. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. As I said, this is our first ever live stream church, and I have to admit, it, it feels a little bit awkward to me because I feel like I'm standing into the church talking to myself, when in reality I'm standing in the church talking to my wife, um, who's my biggest fan. But um, no matter what, we will muddle through this no matter how long it takes, and we will fine-tune it as we go. I was going to show videos, play songs, and I got some warnings from some um, other church friends saying that you can get thrown in Facebook jail if you don't give proper credit where credit's due. So I don't even want to risk showing videos or having PowerPoints that might have copyrighted slides or anything like that. We're just going to do things like this, but I think we'll be all right. So first off, if you have any prayer, requ ugh, prayer request or concerns, or any other announcements, please leave them in the comment section below. And I do have a few uh, prayer concerns and announcements I'd like to say first. First off, um, Barb and Jerry Grimm. I understand that Barb is on oxygen right now, and of course with everything that's going on, their family needs our prayers. Uh, also, this morning I got a, a note that Carla Penn has two granddaughters who have diabetes that we need to pray for during a difficult time like this. Um, one other thing, continue to pray for the men who are working in this building. Construction has not stopped. We are still full at it. Things are happening. And uh, we need to be praying for those men. that They've been safe through all the really difficult work. So let's continue our prayers for them. And speaking of that, the very first week, we had all kinds of food lined up for those guys. And we've kind of slacked on that. So if anybody would like to make any food to bring to the workers, um, you can text me, or call me, whatever, or just come up to the church and put it in the kitchen. Uh, but they would appreciate some food. And we want to keep our workers um, fat and healthy. Uh, one other thing, we have a praise this morning. Today is Jim House's 75th birthday. He's 75. Happy birthday, Jim. And of course... You have a birthday on a Sunday morning, we have to sing happy birthday to you. So everybody, sing along with me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jim. Happy birthday to you. What else? One more announcement. I'd like to remind everyone that although we're not meeting in person, our church building is still undergoing a whole lot of construction. So we still need your tithes. We still need your money. And we understand, please be clear on this, we understand that some of you may be experiencing layoffs or have personal financial struggles during this time. We don't want you to hurt your family, but we also don't want you to neglect your church family and our church building. That's just a friendly reminder from me to you. So with all that said, uh, I think we ought to go to the Lord in prayer. So bow with me at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We praise you. We adore you. 
And we thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you just shower upon us each day. Lord, we might not be able to meet together, but we're still meeting together through this technology, Lord. And that, that's wonderful and that's amazing. And, and Lord, we thank you so much for the ears that might hear this message that don't go here every Sunday, Lord. We, we, we ask that you guide our words and our actions, Lord, that we might act as Christians should act. Dear Holy Father... Heal our hearts and our minds. Uh, we ask for healing, not just physically, Lord, but spiritually. And Lord, we pray for this great nation, Lord, that it may once again find you within its walls. And dear Holy Father, uh, we confess all of the, the struggles that are in our heart, all the sins that we harbor, Lord, and we ask that you help us overcome these sins and, and help us to be better Christians, better people. Dear Lord, we love you. We praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we say, amen. So, yes, the first thing we do is begin in song. And usually we have a couple of songs. Today shouldn't be any different. Let's have a second song. Real simple one. Everyone knows it. God is so good. Just don't leave me hanging. Sing along with me. God is so good. God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me. What would come now in our normal service is communion. So I'd like you to get out your 3D printers so I can send you a wafer and a communion cup. Now actually I do want to talk about communion a little bit. What I want you to encourage you to do is still consider communion. Even though we're not meeting together as a group, we're still a spiritual community. We're still together. So I don't want you to neglect communion. And I want to talk about communion for just a second. You don't have to scramble around the house and say, oh, no, I can't take communion because we don't have any grape juice. Let me just say you don't have to use a cracker and grape juice. That's what the church uses because that's what the church has used for centuries because that's what Jesus used as his original illustration of communion. But please hear me on this, beloved. The food itself is just symbolic. Literally, this morning for communion, I believe in my heart of hearts that you could use a bagel and a cup of coffee. The food is not what's important. What's important is what the food symbolizes. The food symbolizes taking some time this morning to commune with God. Now there's where the question lies. What does to commune with God mean? The Webster's Dictionary defines commune to be close accord or communication with something or someone. To be close accord to, to draw near to. Think about the word community. Community represents a group of people who have personal ties, and they often depend on one another for their needs and their basic necessities of life. A community has shared interest and shared loves, and that is why we take communion every Sunday, because we are a community of like-minded believers gathered together to celebrate a risen Savior. And today should be no different. Spend some time this morning communing with God, drawing close to God through the act of communion. I'd like to encourage you to do that. Another thing I'd like to encourage you to do is when you pray at your communion time, you don't have to do all the talking. We have a bad habit of that, of thinking that when we pray, we just talk and talk and talk. Psalms 46.10 tells us, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. So when you pray, when you take your communion with God this morning, pause for a minute and just listen. See if God has anything he would like to say. So whatever it is you decide to do, however you take your communion, I encourage you, don't neglect communion with God. So with that said, let's begin. Here we are, our first official day, Sunday, of quarantine. And the question has to be asked, how do we feel about this? I have discovered there are two camps 
of people concerning the coronavirus pandemic. Pandemic. The first camp takes this incredibly serious. You're worried about your family. You're worried about interacting with people. You're worried about your community. Perhaps you're even stockpiling toilet paper. But then the second camp of people who are um, reacting to this pandemic is you think this is all overblown and overhyped and overreacted. My encouragement to you this morning is that whatever camp you belong to, no matter which side you lean on, whatever camp you belong to, what is important is how we treat one another during this. See, I've witnessed in the last several years a really sad change in our society, a really sad change in the way that people interact with one another. Pull up your stools, youngster, and let granddad tell you a story of the olden days. There was once a day when people often disagreed with one another, but they remained amicable to one another. There was once a day, not that long ago, when good people, good people, would never dream of purposefully hurting one another whether through their words or their actions. There was once a day when civilization, as we know it, acted civilized. But I don't see that today. Today, people don't hesitate to insult and belittle one another. And usually it's over the most mundane things. And usually when we don't even really know that person. We should be ashamed that society has reached this point. But to be honest, I'm always as honest with you as I possibly can be. To be honest, I too am guilty of this attitude, especially when it comes to political discussions. And and my concern is when we have conversations with someone where words like boomer and snowflake are being tossed around carelessly, I wonder where exactly in this conversation Are we going to fit in an honest discussion of our love for Jesus Christ? Beloved, as Christians, we are called to be better people than that. Matthew 25, 34 through 40 says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty. And you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go and visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for the least of these brothers, you did for me. So however long this may last, my encouragement to you is to all of us, to me as well, guard your words. Be careful of what you may say and do and especially post. Be kind to one another. Think before you speak whether that be with your lips or through your post. Be aware of who exactly your words may reach. Because after all, the fact is, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. It's just, the thing is, there are many, many out there who have not yet acknowledged and confessed that they are brothers and sisters in Christ. So we need to be aware if our words are reaching them and how our words are affecting those who have not given themselves to Christ. Basically what I'm saying is, remember the famous words of those singing nuns from the 1960s. Those words still hold true today. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity will one day be restored. 
And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. This next verse here, if you call yourself a Christian, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, liberal, whatever your stance is. I don't care. Listen to this verse if you call yourself a Christian. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. We will work with each other. We will work side by side. And we'll guard each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. It is okay to have conflicting opinions. That's, that's what makes, that's what makes th this world great. Conflicting opinions create conversation. And that's okay if we're having conversation. But just be careful. Be careful how we're treating one another during a difficult time. And be aware of those around you. Um, also in our prayer concerns, I just got handed this. Uh, Stacy Nope would like us to pray for her twin sister, Tracy. So Stacy, know that we are going to pray for Tracy. Absolutely. Please don't forget everyone who needs our prayers at this difficult time. So I have addressed how we should be treating one another during this, this scare right now this difficult time. The next thing I would like to address is for those of you who wonder how we should be handling this. How in the world should we be handling this situation? The fact is, this is the most extreme incident that I've seen in my lifetime. Schools are closed. Businesses are closed. We're told to keep social distancing. Groups of 10 or more are supposed to stop meeting together. What does this all mean? It may be true. It may be true that these events might have some catastrophic event or effect on our economy in the days to come. But it also may be true that these events may be absolutely necessary to keep people from dying and this virus from spreading. And you have to be careful how much news you listen to. The reports are everywhere. The reports vary that this may last 15 days. It may last much, much longer. But know this. Know this truth. Eventually, things will return to normal. And this is actually where the true question lies. Should things return to normal? Do we really want things to return to normal? If you think about it, for most of us, what does this self-quarantine really mean? For most of us, what it really means is spending more time at home with our families, buying less stuff, eating home-cooked meals, and teaching our children. Is that really so bad? Think about it. This is the event that finally brought prayer and discipline back into our schools. Is that so bad? And, I, and while I said I am certain this will have an effect on our economy, I'm also certain, I'm absolutely 100% certain that not only will our, will our economy spring back just as it always has, I think it'll spring back stronger than ever as people who have been contained in their homes rush out to pack restaurants and bars and all the other places they feel that they've neglected. I'm also certain that if we utilize this self-quarantine to our advantage, we can actually build up healthier relationships and happier families. So here's a suggestion for all of you, for me as well. Let's use this self-quarantine to our advantage. Husbands, re-familiarize yourself with your wives. Re-establish those relationships. Rediscover what it was that made you initially fall in love. Wives, support your husbands. 
Break out that honeydew list, but work on them together. Work on them side by side. Let us work with each other. Cook meals as a family. Turn off the TV, please. Every once in a while, turn off the TV. Play a board game. Play some cards. Start a Bible study. Pray together as a family. This doesn't have to be an altogether terrible thing. Use this to your advantage. Those of you who are parents who have children at home, use this as an opportunity to bring God back into the schools. Pray with your children. And this is important. When you get old, when you get old like me and your children are grown, you understand how many days you missed playing with your children. Pray with your children and play with your children. This does not have to be an altogether terrible thing. This could be just the event that will be, build stronger relationships, happier families, and develop more faithful Christians. And if you're one of those people who can't help but panic, I want you to remember these words from Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Take a breath. Be still and know that things are in God's hands. In fact, all of Psalm 46 actually works really well for these troubling times. I'm going to read Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shield with fire. And he says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're struggling with, just stop, hit pause, be still, and know that I am God. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. God bless, beloved. Take care of yourselves and be still and know that I am God. I love you.